HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. And I am imagining that you know that Audible.com has audiobooks, but you might not know about the other content. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash business growth, sign up for a free trial and check it out for yourself. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast uh, continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. And uh, this is because of the guests. These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business. And they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. Today is no exception. My guest today is Tim Fitzpatrick. Tim is an entrepreneur with expertise in marketing and business growth. He has over 20 years of entrepreneurial experience with a passion for developing and growing businesses. That passion served him well in operating and managing a wholesale distribution company he co-owned for nine years before being acquired in 2005. He started Rialto Marketing in 2013 and has been helping service businesses simplify marketing so they can grow with less stress. Thanks so much for joining me today, Tim. Happy to be here, Diane. Great to have you here. So, and, and I love this idea of you know marketing uh, so they can grow with less stress because I was just talking to someone before this podcast who's in a service business who's who we were talking about like social media marketing. And I had said to her, um, I don't think she should do it herself. I think she should hire someone to do it because um, it, it's just not where she should be spending her time. And the, and the stress that it causes is just not worth it. So 
There are, there are many things in our business that are not the highest and best use of our time, right? Right. Right. Exactly. And that would be one of them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So, okay. So I want to start like, you know, just with the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals of marketing? To me, there's, there's three fundamentals. I call them the marketing strategy trilogy. The first is your target market. You know, so who, who are you going to serve and how are you going to serve those people? You know, and really understanding who your ideal clients are. The second is your messaging. So what you say, how you say it, you know, the value, how you communicate the value you provide to your target market is critical. And then the third aspect of it is you have to have a plan of how you're going to get that message in front of those people. Those three things lay the foundation for you to build the rest of your marketing house from. And if you skip them, you're, you're building the house without a foundation, which is not a good thing. So you have to have all three. You have to have them. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with target market. Um, how does someone go about defining their target market? The, so the easiest place for, for most businesses to start, and when you start here, I'm assuming that you've been in business for a while. You have past customers, you have current customers that you're working with. The easiest place to start is to ask yourself three questions. The first question is, who do you enjoy working with? Why in the world would we want to start a business and work with people that we don't enjoy working with every day? It's just going to make our life miserable. So it's, that's the most logical place to start. The second question is, <clears throat> who are your most profitable clients? If we're going to stay in business, we need to be profitable. You know, and frankly, if we're working with clients that aren't profitable, we're not only are we doing ourselves a disservice we're doing them a disservice because we're not going to be around long enough to continue to serve them mm. so we got to work with people that are profitable and the third question is who do we do our best work for if we work with people over and over again that we do great work for we know what results we're going to get for them what's going to happen they're going to want to continue to work with us they're going to you know they may continue to do business with you, do repeat business, upsell, they'll refer you. So if you can answer pod, the group of customers that you can answer positively to all three of those questions, that is the group where you start to look for your ideal clients. And most businesses have one to three ideal client types. I don't recommend having more than that mm -hmm. because it's just going to dilute your focus. Um, it, that doesn't mean that those are the only people that you're going to do business with. It just means those are the only people you're going to spend time and effort to attract and focus your marketing efforts on. And so when you've got this group of people, you can start to then look at and dig into the demographics, you know, the numbers, you know, do they live in certain areas? Do they have certain jobs? You know, to, I guess the numbers are going to depend on whether you're business to business or business to to consumer, yeah. but you can start to look at some of those demographics. And then you can also look at the psychographics, which I think are equally, if not more important than the demographics, which is how are they feeling? You know, what attitudes do they have? Roadblocks, the common problems that they have, what results are they looking for? And when you look at that group and you look at the demographics and the psychographics, what inevitably happens is one to three subgroups kind of come to the surface. Those are your ideal client types. That's so interesting. Okay, I, I, I think that is fascinating and I'm, I'm so interested in, in this subgroup. So if I'm understanding you, what you're really doing is really drilling down to who, um, Re who you really want to be working with. Yes. Who really is going to value what you're doing and really needs what you're doing. Right. Yep. Hmm. Okay. You're it, it, the, the one to three subgroups that come out of that main group, you know, every single one of those ideal client types are people that you like working with that are profitable, mm -hmm. that you do great work for. Got it. 
once you have those groups, now you can start to dig into where the heck are these people? How do I find them? But you can't, you can't determine how to find people until you hone in on who you're actually trying to attract, right? Yeah. And so that's why it's so important to really hone in and narrow in on. I mean, look, there's a lot of people, it's like, hey, we work with entrepreneurs. Well, I mean, that's great, but it's really broad. And, <laughs> and it becomes really difficult to hone in. Okay, well, if I'm going to attract entrepreneurs, where the heck do I need to be? But if I know that one of my ideal client types is chiropractors, okay, let's just take chiropractor, for example, mm -hmm. then I can start to go, okay, one of my ideal client types is chiropractors. Where are they? Like, what associations do they belong to? What groups do they mm -hmm. follow or belong to on Facebook or LinkedIn? What forums do they, where do, do they go to to get information? Are there chiropractic magazines and publications that they follow? Are there podcast or chiropractic podcasters that they follow? Influencers, right? You just start going down that list and you could, I mean, for a training that I did a while back, I did, I use chiropractors as an, as an example. And I, before the workshop I did, I spent maybe 15, 20 minutes online searching. And I came up with a list of 15 to 20 different places where chiropractors may be. Hmm. And that was in 20 minutes, okay? I mean, if I actually spent some time, I could come up with an infinite list of places where I could attract chiropractors. Now with that list, I'm now prepared because I know where I need to go to get in front of those people. Ah, okay. Okay, Th this makes so much sense to me. So, um, okay. Now, you sort you alluded to this, but but I really want to ask you this question and, sure. and have you say something about it again. What do you say to the person who says, "Okay, but really, every chiropractor is a good prospect for me"? Great question. So we're <laughs> digging a little bit deeper into this because not every chiropractor is going to be an ideal client for you. That's where the psychographics, I think, really start to come into play. Certainly some of the demographics can. So maybe you're, you know, you, you do great work for chiropractors that have multiple chiropractors in the practice, right? They're, and they're doing at least whatever, a million dollars a year, for example. Those certainly are some demographics, but the psychographics really, I mean, look, if, okay, let's just take marketing as an example. If I'm trying to attract chiropractors, I can't help people that don't value marketing, you know, or see yeah. the need yeah. for marketing. So not every chiropractor views marketing as, as critical for them. Maybe they're a hundred percent referral and they're happy doing that. Well, great. I can't help you. So, you know, so they have to fall into some of those parameters where it's like, Hey, they have, they have a desire to grow their business. They have the money to invest in that so that we can help them grow their business each month. Those are some of the psychographics that come into play where you can sit and really help you in the sales process to determine, is this, is this prospective chiropractic client actually a good fit for me or not? That's great. That is, thank you so much for that. I, I think yeah. that is exactly what people need to hear. That, that, that's terrific. Um, so or I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I sure. want to you know, hit some of these other points. Uh, the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com and you can get a free trial so you can check out all of the audio content on your own. If you go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, get that free trial and then go exploring. Check out the Audible originals and the guided meditations and the podcasts and the news and the thousands of audiobook titles that are there. Uh, it, it's really awesome. And uh, for me, one of the coolest things is um, that I can get all of that in one place. So I don't have to have, you know, jump from one platform to another. So, you know, check it out for yourself. I think you're going to enjoy it. And I think you will find other things about it that you value. 
Today, we're speaking with Tim Fitzpatrick about marketing strategies and, and about the fundamentals of uh, marketing. So, Tim, before we took the break, we were talking about, you know, ideal client and how do you find out where they are and, and you know, really drilling down. So now let's talk about messaging. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> how does someone create a clear engaging message that is directed toward their ideal client and, you know, therefore will be productive for their business. Yep. So the first thing that I think is important to keep in mind when we think about messaging is our goal here <clears throat> is to really enter the conversation that the prospect's having in their own mind. So when they, when they read your message, Diane, we, we really want them to be thinking, oh my God, was, was Diane like in that meeting that we had last week where we, where we were talking about this exact thing or wh was she a fly on the wall when I was thinking about this last night? I mean, when you get to that point, you've got, you've got them because they're like, Diane gets me. She knows exactly what my problem is. She knows exactly how to solve it. You know, yes, those benefits that she's talking about, that's exactly what I want. So that's what, that's our end goal here. The, but we can't start our messaging until we first know that target market. Right. Mm -hmm. And so once we know that target market, then we can start to look at our messaging and we use a storytelling framework for this and I'll, and I'll, go into why, but uh, I did not invent this. We follow a framework from a company called StoryBrand, if you're familiar with them. Oh, yeah. Um, it just, when it was introduced to me, it just made sense. It, it, it just really clicked with me and it clicks with clients because it's based on a common storytelling framework. So let's dig into this real quick. <clears throat> when you think about most stories, there is a character or a hero, right? Mm -hmm. And they have a problem. They have this problem. They don't know how to solve it. And they meet a guide. Well, that guide knows exactly how to solve the hero's problem because they used to be in the hero's shoes. And so the guide, you know, gives the hero a plan that calls them to action so that they hopefully avoid failure and they reach success. So let's, I'm going to give you an example from a movie. Um, Point Break is one of my favorite movies. Don't, don't, don't fault me. Uh, are you familiar with the movie? Um, I am. <laughs> okay. So for those that aren't, right, Point Break, the original, Keone Reeves is a green FBI agent. And the problem is there is a band of bank robbers in Southern California called the ex-presidents. And they're out hitting banks. Well, the guide in the story is Gary Busey, who is his seasoned FBI partner. And he gives Keone a plan. He says, look, I believe that the ex-presidents are surfers. So you need to learn how to surf and get into this community. And when you do, I think you're going to end up meeting them and, and things are going to go well, right? So the call to action is you got to learn how to surf. He goes to learn how to surf. He meets them. And what happens? They avoid failure, which is the ex-presidents get away and they reach success, which is they catch them. So what we do here is we take that same concept and we apply it to your business by inviting your customer into a story where they're the hero and your company is the guide. Hmm. So many businesses make the mistake of positioning themselves as the hero. Yeah. Our customers are not looking for a hero. Our customers are looking for a guide that can help them get from where they are to where they want to be a guide that knows exactly how to solve the problem that they have. Guides have authority, credibility, and empathy. Heroes, if you think about it, are very weak characters. They're lost. They have no idea what the heck to do. You know, they've got this problem and they're like, what the hell am I going to do? Well, they meet the guide and the guide says, I know exactly what you need to do. You need to do X, Y, and Z. So, we want to position your business as the guide and your customer as the hero. And when you do that, you end up, you, one, you start to create messaging that is clear and engaging because you're using this framework over and over again. You're not reinventing the wheel every time you need to create a social post or, 
you know, a workshop uh, announcement or an ad, you go back to the framework and you pull bits and pieces from that to create the message. Hmm. So that, many of us I'm sorry, try to ahead. get cute and clever with our, our marketing message. Yeah. And we inevitably, it falls flat because we make people think too much. You know, we're short on attention. Our attention spans are so short. The last time I looked, I saw a quote, a stat that said, the attention, the average attention span of a human is eight seconds, which is less Ooh. than that of a goldfish. <laughs> so if somebody lands on, you know, the top part of our website and they read this message and they have no idea, you know, what we do and how they're going to benefit by working mm -hmm. with us and what they need to do to buy it, they're, they're moving on, they're gone. So we need to err on the side of being clear and our message is going to resonate much, much better. That's so interesting. I mean, I love clarity and, and I think this is, you know, so connected to really understanding your ideal client because, you know, the person who I asked, you know, the imaginary person who says, okay, but every chiropractor is an ideal client, you know, those are the people who have their messaging so broad that it yep. is so vague that no one lands on it. Yep. And you really need to, when you go through this process, yeah. it's you, what comes out of it is that clarity and mm. that clear, simple message. You know, so a lot of the times the, the place that we start with with most clients, again, who have existing and past clients, right? They know who those ideal clients are, mm -hmm. is we start with doing I ideal client um, interviews and you just talk to them because one of the things that we, most of us struggle with, I struggle with this myself, is we can't see the forest through the trees in our business. Yeah. We are so invested in it and so close to it. Yeah. Sometimes it is so hard for us to articulate that value that we provide. And when we sit down and we ask the right questions to our ideal clients, they can articulate it perfectly, you know, <laughs> and you just read through the information that they've provided and you're like, oh my God, that makes perfect sense. Why didn't I see that? Yeah, right. Exactly. Because you're too close to it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about the plan that, that you, you know, the third um, yep. fundamental. So how can someone create like a simple marketing plan? Yes. Okay. So the way I approach marketing plans is 90 day sprints. Hmm. Our businesses are evolving too quickly. Yeah. Um, are, if you use a longer term plan, you're just not going to be able to adapt. And frankly, what happens most of the time with a longer term plan, a year, two, three years, you know, you, you end up with this complex 15, 20 page plan. And it, it's just, it's too complicated. And okay. complexity is the enemy of results. So when something is too complicated, you're just not going to use it. No. So let's just keep it simple and use a 90 day plan that we can wash, rinse and repeat. So there's six steps in this plan. And, and by the way, all the stuff we're talking about, your, your listeners are going to have free resources for every one of these things that we're talking about. So cool. um, the marketing plan template we use, six steps. The first step is your target market. So at the very least, I want you to write a paragraph of for each ideal client type you have, no more than three. If you at least write a paragraph for each one, of some of the basic demographics and this, those psychographics, having it in the plan just helps keep it top of mind for who you, who you intend to attract. Hmm. The okay. second step is what's my goal? What's my goal for the next 90 days? It needs to be specific. It needs to be measurable. It's going to be time bound because this is a 90 day plan. But so for example, I may have a goal of, you know, I intend to bring on five new clients in the next 90 days specific, it's measurable in, in almost every case, that 90 day goal is going to be that next stepping stone to help me get to one of my longer term goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we have to have an, a general idea of what, what we intend to accomplish here, which is why we want to get that goal down. The third step is your marketing budget and your resources. 
So budget, I mean, we all understand budget. Do I have $500 a month to invest in my marketing or do I have 5,000? From a resources standpoint, what we're looking at is staff. You know, is it your time? Is it somebody else on your staff's time? And you need to look at capabilities. Right? Just because somebody has, you were, you're, <laughs> we were talking about this um, before where it's like, you know, just because you have the time to, to do social media doesn't mean that you should be doing it. If, if you're no good at it, you shouldn't be doing it. So we've got to look at capability and time. But what this does is allow, uh, it gives us a good idea of what we have to work with. You know, because if, if it's just me and I have four hours a week and $500 a month, I may only be able to bite off so much in my marketing plan and that's okay. I just don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Yeah. Okay. So in the fourth step, we're looking at your current marketing plan. And with the current marketing plan, Diane, when I bring this up, you know, I always say, look, I understand a lot of people may not even have a plan. That's okay. We just want to get down in this section where you're starting from. Ah, okay. It gives okay. us a baseline. So it's very, it's no different than our GPS. My GPS can't tell me to how, how to get to Denver International Airport until I tell it I'm starting from Highlands Ranch yeah. or wherever it may be. We've got to have that baseline to, so that we can identify what we need to do to get from where we currently are to where we want to go. So just write down what you're doing. I look at marketing in eight main channels. So there's the strategy portion of it, the fundamentals, the target market, the messaging. If you don't have that in place, you've got to start there. Then you've got your website, you have content, you know, so am I blogging? Am I doing podcasts, videos, whatever that may be. SEO, you know, or search engine optimization, helping me show up in search results, social media, email marketing, paid ads. So Google or Google ads, Facebook ads, and then offline marketing. So, you know, networking or joint venture partnerships, direct mail. All I want you to do in this four step is just write down what you have done and what you continue to do in those areas. And if you're not doing stuff in some of those channels, that's okay. You don't have to do something in every marketing channel to be successful. Mm-hmm. Then the n- fifth step is what am I going to focus on in the next 90 days in each of those channels? And like I touched on before, you know, look, if you don't have a good handle on your ideal clients and your messaging, you need to start there. Otherwise, you're going to waste time and money with your marketing. You know, and then from there, you can start to expand out. And you know, if you need to do updates on your website, and you can expand out from there. And what you choose to focus on is really going to depend on, you know, again, where you're starting from and what kind of budget and resources you have. And then the last thing you're going to look at is the metrics. What metrics am I going to track to help give me an indication of whether the actions I'm taking in my plan are actually working or not? I like to encourage people to keep this simple. You know, there's so many different vanity metrics in marketing I mean, look, I was a math major. I mean, I can get lost in the numbers and the analytics, but you know, how many visits I have coming to my website, how many followers I have on Facebook, how many people I have on my email list. To me, none of that stuff matters if you're not generating leads and converting those people to customers. So I would highly recommend that you start simple and track the number of leads and then how many of those leads turn into customers to start. And then you can start to get more advanced, start to track other additional metrics as you get better and better at this. But for most business owners, if they can understand how many leads they're generating each month and how many of those convert to clients, that is an incredibly powerful number. Yeah, no kidding. Because really that tells, it seems to me like that tells you a couple of things. Are you marketing in the right places is your message clearly directed at your target you know which goes with the third one which is have you really clearly defined your target yep Hmm. well and you also know so you know let's say i for every three clients or for every three leads we get in we convert one to a client you know so now i know if you know if my goal is to bring on two new clients, I need to generate six leads. Right. 
what am I going to do to generate those six leads? What tactics am I going to use? So uh, there's so many people that don't know those numbers. And I think it's an easy place to start. Can you start to track more down the road? Yes, you can. Um, And if you're doing specific things, you know, like if I'm doing email marketing, well, maybe I want to look at and track how many people I'm adding to my email list and, you know, what the open rates are, that kind of stuff uh, is important to, you know, help you determine whether some of the things you're doing there are, are working. But in the end, it's like, well, are these people that I'm emailing and converting to leads and then to customers at some point, you know, I think too many people track too many things that don't matter. And, you know, that's not going to help you anybody. So this is so interesting for me because I, I, I have encountered a lot of marketing people who will say, you know, it's hard to directly correlate between the the marketing that we do and, you know, whether you get clients out of it or not, that marketing is about um, creating awareness. Yeah. But unless you're, you know, doing like paid ads when it comes to online, um, you know, that, that it's tricky. And I feel like what I'm hearing from you is if you go through these steps and, and you really are directly targeting and focusing on your ideal client that you are going to be able to, you know, have a correlation between those things. Is that you can, you can. It, I mean, it can get pretty complicated, but the, the great thing about digital is there's so many things we can, we can track frankly, even offline, you can track things, you know, so um, let me give you an example. So uh, let's just, let's just say I'm going to do a direct mail campaign. Okay. Okay? So many people put together a direct mail postcard and their phone number and their website is on there. Maybe they have some call to action that, you know, visit, you know, this link. Well, they're, they don't have enough detail in there to really track it, but if I sent out a um, postcard, there's call tracking software out there. So I could use call tracking software, put a very specific number on that campaign. And that call tracking software is going to tell me how many phone calls that I got from that particular mailing. I could put on a specific URL, right? So we can use what we call UTM tracking codes within a URL and so I could use a very specific URL and if people, the, the, and that it's only for that direct mail campaign so that when people click on that URL, I can track those metrics. I can track how many people went there. I can track whether people converted hmm. and actually took the action that I wanted to. So even with offline elements, there are, there are things that you can put in place that are going to help you track the effectiveness of it. Interesting. That's great. Thank you. I, yeah. I, that, that is um, definitely something that uh, people need to know. So, um, and Tim, I got to tell you, I, I really appreciate this information. I appreciate how um, clear it is and, and you know, specific and, and just makes so much sense. Um, will you, you mentioned, you know, that there's a, um, a link that has resources, but will you tell the listeners, you know, how they can find you, how they can find those resources, um, that kind of thing, please? Yeah, absolutely. So the best place to go, if, I mean, if you like what we chatted about and you want more information, our website is rialtomarketing.com. So that's R-I-A-L-T-O marketing.com. The free resources I mentioned are at rialtomarketing.com forward slash accelerate dash your dash business dash growth. And there's the messaging framework that we use the the 90 day marketing plan template, the customer insights survey questions that I, that I touched on. Um, There's some target market resources there. There's all kinds of stuff there that I think will be helpful. If your listeners try it and they're hitting roadblocks and they need some outside eyes, all they need to do is click get a free consultation from that page or anywhere on our website, frankly. And I'll be happy to chat with them and help them get some, some clarity and push through those roadblocks. That's terrific. Thank you so much for that and, and for all of this information and listeners. Thank you. 
Um, I, I think you got an awful, you should have gotten an awful lot about it, out of this and go to the link, you know, it's in the show notes. Um, check out those resources and really, you know, give your marketing a, a real uh, strong effort because that's what's going to get you more profitable business. I'd also like to thank audible.com. Head over to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Uh, sign up for the free trial and then go exploring. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. I have been fed, that's a fact. I have been fed, that's a fact. My credit card purchases get me cash back. My credit card purchases get me cash back. No one else gets these rewards. Sergeant, that is just plain untrue. What in tarnation? Sir, PenFed's Power Cash Rewards Card isn't just for military members. Anyone can get cash back on all purchases. Ah, figgins! You've ruined my favorite song. PenFed Credit Union. Visit penfed.org slash powercash. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Hip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell Yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We We out. out.